Well, since it is the owner's desire to save as much as he can, I'm going to look at this sideboard and this other sideboard as well and see if there's anything in here that is salvageable, even if I have to cut off broken, rotted pieces and kind of join in some new pieces. But I want to get these sides off this rotted floorboard. So all of these irons that hold the bench also go down through the floorboard and attach the sides to the floor. You've seen this before. Well, I was trying to take the lower part of this iron off and it was so rusted where it went through the frame that it just twisted right off. So it really loosened this end up and it wants to just drop this tailgate out. This back tailgate just slides in just like a typical farm wagon tailgate wood slips in between these two slats here on the end so this is just going to come out pretty much in one piece i did get this nut loosened up off of the iron for the left side this one didn't break i did have to put the torch on it and heat it up and work some of that rust loose but that did want to come loose And that'll release my sideboards off of my floorboard. Well, this divider that goes to the bed is on hinges. It looks like this framework here was bolted to the side of this box here. So this sideboard should be free. I've got come-alongs on it to kind of hold it in place. So these two center cross braces, even though they're rotted on that end, they're kind of hanging in there. But that leaves this side free, and it'll also allow this other side to be free. Because this top bench board is still in place, I've got to grab a hold of it out on the outside, so it's going to want to swing over just about like that. Just about like that. <laughs> free anyway. Kind of a big crash. Huh? Oh, I'll see if I can get these irons loose from the cross frames. See how that's going to work. So then I can get to these bolts and nuts underneath here. I think if I work these a little bit, I can get them loose. I got a little PB blaster on there. That secondary floor was nailed through the sideboard into the floor. I'm kind of cleaning this out a little bit. This is a light piece of tin that was vertical and then underneath. And this is where the front wheels would have rubbed. And evidently the rub iron was missing or broken. And you can see where that wheel had chewed out the side of this sideboard. And when I went to this two-wheel dolly type of deal with these Model A, Model T wheels, they just put this piece of tin over to close up this hole. Get this last nut off from this side. Amazingly well. And this is the tin on the other side where the wheel rub would have been. They would generally be a pretty heavy cast iron. This tin was just put on to cover up a hole or a place where they had worn. And see this was 
well worn too. This front part of the board is broken and missing, but you can see where that wheel had rubbed as well. Another indication that originally this had a wood wheel undercarriage underneath it. You can also tell from where this rub was, the bottom of the board would have been down in here to accommodate this iron. So this front portion of this board is broken as well and pretty rotted up front. So this is the left side of the box and I've got it laid down on the sawhorses where I've been working on these nuts trying to get them loose and I've got most of them loose. There's a few that I had to cut, but most of them with a little bit of heat, some PB blaster, some WD-40, I've been able to get most of them loose. So through the process of this, it's been revealing a little bit more about how and who built this sheep wagon. So I'd say obviously I don't know the name of the particular person or persons that built this, but through the process of getting some of these nuts loose, I've been learning some of the process of how this was put together. Last time I mentioned that I think it was a wagon box that was extended and turned into a sheep wagon. That's possible. You know, it could have been that this was a 12 foot long wagon. Most wagons are 10 and a half feet. So was this a 16 inch sideboard 12 foot wagon? That would be a little odd, possible. But these hooks on the end indicate to me that there was a chain and a platform that was off of the back of this wagon behind this grain box. Now this is the rear cross frame that came out from underneath this. And I was expecting to see some indication that there might have been hinges here, but there wasn't. So I was kind of puzzling, did I misjudge what these hooks were? But again, as I was working with this, this cross frame came through this side iron here for the box. Then I got to noticing these irons here and kind of thinking, what's going on here? Well, then I got to realize there's one on both sides and there would have been a rod that went through here. So the platform of the back, on this case, what we would call the boot, similar to the mud wagon, there was a rod and then there would have been iron hinges forged for that platform, but that whole platform is missing. And so instead of a hinge effect, it was a rod and then hinges on the platform that would have hinged on this rod. So I'm thinking there was a platform on the back of this wagon initially. Chains hung here, the platform hinged off of this rod here. So as I was disassembling this, this is the bolt that actually broke from this bolt here. This one here did want to release. So this is the hinge iron on the back of this. It said about like so. So this is the other end with this board here. And you can see there's a remnant here that this was a tongue and groove joint for this addition that was put on on top of this 16 inch sideboard. So I thought that initially this was put on to reinforce that, but now I've come to think this was put on afterwards where I think possibly this wood shrunk and opened up a gap here and this was put on to cover that gap. I think in the initial build, this quarter round was what was put in this joint between the bench and the sideboard. This I think was an afterthought. So this is a bolt that came through the upright iron that goes down the side of this box. You can see how this board here was cut out around this bolt and this nut because the nut was already there. Now coming on down the side where these supports are and then this is the side step and there was evidence that there was a box that was fastened here. This vertical rod went through the bench and held this box in place. But again, there's a bolt here and this plate that was put on over this joint, they notched around this bolt a little differently than the front, but again showing this bolt was already in place when this plate was added. So now we're back on the other end where this hook was for the rear boot. You can see that there's some cutout work done here also, and this is where the cross rod went. So this is the eye, 
it would have been you know going through this direction but this was sawn out to accommodate this eye that was already in position this was cut out to go around that another indication that this was added on after the fact possibly to cover a joint that was opening up these nuts also are almost impossible to turn because this wood is right there on top of it so I need to pull this off and try to get these off. I've got this one loose, but this one doesn't want to come quite yet. Well, down the side of this plate, there's some eye bolts that have been screwed in. There's four of them down the side. And I think maybe these were to lash the top two. Possibly the lash strings went from the canvas down to here. Kind of a speculation. So most of these bolts I've got loosened up start to disassemble some of this. I'm try to keep some of these nuts with the original bolts. I might use as many of these as I can. I'm going to see if I can get this plate off. This had a few screws in it, but most of them had these little quarter inch bolts. And these are only about oh, three quarters of an inch long, so I can just back those out a little bit. I think they'll be okay. A few of these I had to break off, but most of them came off fairly easily, and I think mainly because they're underneath this bench and were kind of protected. cross rod that only went across as far as the door so it's fairly short they put a big old nut in there to take up some extra space because the thing was too long this bolt was spinning so I took my sawzall and I just cut it so that's going to turn us loose there there again, where it was notched out for the bolt here. There's a fair bit of rot here. So now I'm wondering if this wasn't the patch for a rotten sideboard even way back then. Possibly just got worse with time. But all down the side of this, there's some really bad rot in this board. Now there's another spot here that's pretty poor. So this looks like it was a repair for a sideboard that was just going bad. And this board here just covered all that up. Down to the end here as well, this top board is pretty bad. So this could possibly have been a on the farm repair after years of use and then this decay and rot was setting in. That's possible. This is obviously a newer board than these are here, even though it's painted the same tone of red. So I'm going to see if I can get this bench off of here. Just see what I've got, individual pieces. This has been nailed down into this piece here, and then this quarter round as well. take this pots and pan box off or release it anyway and maybe I can get this unfastened from the sideboard pots and 
pan box is falling off here. It looks like maybe this is part of the original shield behind the stove. This one must have been added on after the fact, maybe. This was tacked to the sideboard. That would have allowed a little air space in behind the stove. Keep that from heating up the wood so bad. So now we're down to the basics of what is left. What do we do? This is a side piece and we can tell now where this top piece was added and all the rot along the top. If I were to think that I could trim off this top three inches to get rid of this is what was kind of my thought. I am down to this area here this was a piece that was laid up against the angle iron standard on the rear axle and it jammed itself through here and broke this. So this whole portion of the sideboard splintered out. If I cut off three inches to get rid of this rot, I'm right down into that there. On the front end, if I took that three inches off, you know, I've got some splits, but it's basically intact. So I was thinking, well, I could save maybe 10 inches in here. But when I get down to the other end, that's where that break is right in, in the middle. And then to think if I trimmed off this bottom six inches of what is broken and missing and get rid of all this rotted bottom portion, by the time I get down to the back end of this, I'm again only about four or five inches away from this real busted up section here. So there's really no full 12 foot length in this sideboard that is in one piece. Then on the bench side, the back end is split, but I thought at first, you know, well, maybe we could put that together. The reason I went and took a sawzall and cut all these nails off was because these nails are about two and a half inches long. So they're sunk pretty deep into this newer portion and I was splitting off this top edge of the bench while these nails, as rusted as they were, were refusing to come out. So to create the least amount of damage, I thought I'd better just cut those off. Now some of these are sticking up enough that perhaps I can get an eagle claw in there and pull some of those out. So this is the inner side of the bench. And this would be the portion that would be inside the wagon. And this whole side here is rotted and broken. So I'm going to end up having to cut off, you know, four or five inches to get rid of that. If I were to try to joint in a new piece to save this, that's possible. You know, we could tolerate this split. It's got a lot of warp to it. Who knows? So in a project like this, you know, I get to demonstrate what is here and I get to do the work. But I'm not the one that makes the final decision. Totally. I have a great factor in that decision that's to be made, but I have to present the facts as they are. And that's what I'm doing here. If I were to joint any of this, I have to have it out to where I can work on it. I can't have the iron work on it. So I had to take it all apart. So we will visit about what we're going to do and I'll go ahead and take the right side off as well. 
the bench seat is gone, the sideboard is a little better shape, it doesn't have the brake on the side like this one does. So, if this was yours, seeing the evidence that you see now, what would you do? Me, knowing what I do now, and you knowing now what I know, I would make my own decision, and I'll hold that in reserve at this time. But, you know, this is the value system judgment call that we all have to make. So I'll ask the owner to come down and look at it and we'll visit about it. Part of the process. Anyway, appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching.